Tricky Topics video series. Schedules of Reinforcement Schedules of Reinforcement tell us about the when of operant learning. When reinforcement follows every response, such as giving a dog a biscuit every time he sits, it's called continuous reinforcement. With continuous reinforcement, the individual expects to get something for every response, and therefore this is the most predictable schedule and tends to have a strong influence on behavior. A vending machine works under a continuous reinforcement schedule. Every time you put in your money, you're reinforced with a snack of your choosing. If you've ever had the misfortune to put money into a vending machine and get nothing, you'd probably be a bit upset. This is an example of extinction, which is pretty well the exact opposite of continuous reinforcement, where a response no longer produces the desired outcome. So, in other words, the behavior is not reinforced. Not surprisingly, responding usually declines dramatically under conditions of extinction. In terms of the when of reinforcement, continuous reinforcement and extinction are the two simplest scenarios. They are sort of like the on and off switches for operant behavior, but operant conditioning can work under more complex or varied schedules. Intermittent reinforcement is when reinforcement does not follow every single response. This type of schedule is also called partial reinforcement. As you will learn in this section, the element of uncertainty about whether or not the next attempt will result in a reward is a big part of intermittent reinforcement schedules and has a substantial effect on operant behavior. In general, intermittent reinforcement produces stronger responses, both in terms of rate of responding and resistance to extinction, than does continuous reinforcement. Skinner identified four different patterns of intermittent reinforcement, categorized by whether reinforcement is based upon the number of responses or period of time and how strictly they adhere to the schedule. With fixed schedules, reinforcement follows an exact number of responses, called a fixed ratio, or precise time interval, called a fixed interval. With variable schedules, reinforcement roughly follows an average number of responses, called variable ratio, or approximate time interval, called a variable interval. Some real-world examples of these four schedules are shown here. A vending machine, here on the top left, operates on a fixed ratio schedule, with every response, inserting money, rewarded with a tasty snack. This is an FR1, which is actually the same thing as a continuous reinforcement schedule. The number of responses under a fixed ratio can be greater than one, like a kid needing to take 20 bites of supper before getting ice cream for dessert. This would be an FR20. A gambling machine, like this old school slot machine on the bottom left, operates under a variable ratio schedule, with a win occurring after an average number of responses, although the player doesn't know exactly how many. Say the machine actually operates on a VR100. It means that around 100 responses are required, but sometimes it might be many more and on the lucky trials, it might be many less. A behavior that follows a clear fixed interval schedule is studying behavior for regularly scheduled exams on the top right. Over a typical 12-week course, I usually have an exam every four weeks, and class attendance, an easily measurable behavior, is greatest in the days leading up to the exam. This would be a fixed interval four, with the time period being in weeks. Lastly, an odd but memorable example of a variable interval schedule is going to the bathroom. Studies show that most humans go to the bathroom roughly every two to four hours, sometimes a bit more often and sometimes a bit less, but on average this works out to a VI3 with the unit of time being in hours. Note that people usually go to the bathroom to get rid of the uncomfortable feeling of a full bladder. So reinforcement comes in the form of getting rid of this unwanted sensation. The figure above is based upon classic work by Skinner and shows how schedules influence operant learning. Time is represented on the x-axis along the bottom, and the running total is represented as cumulative number of responses 
on the y-axis on the left. Each tick mark on the figure here indicates when a reinforcer is obtained. It should be immediately obvious that different schedules of reinforcement lead to different rates of responding. Ratio schedules result in steep rates of responding, with lots of responses over short time periods compared to time-based interval schedules. Also note that fixed schedules, both ratio and interval, produce a dip in responding immediately after reinforcement, which is referred to as a scalloped pattern. Fixed intermittent schedules are predictable, so the individual knows that the next response is not going to be followed right away by a reward, and responding takes a little break.